police hunt for Abdul Azadi enters its second week tonight and this evening the, the focus of that investigation has been on this pizza takeaway behind me in Forest Hall on the edge of Newcastle. Around 11pm there was a large police presence, armed police blocked off the road and entered the property and also forced their way into a side door which leads to a flat above. Uh, have, we have been seeing searches in that flat above and then there have been a large number of officers speaking to staff in the premises. It's quieting down now, but this clearly has been one of the most intense police operations in the Tyneside area following that attack in London seven days ago. Oh yes. Hello to police, is anyone home? Nah, that's Hello police. Yep. Yep. So our investigation so our investigation team has been working round the clock. We're keeping an open mind about where he's gone. We're obviously following the evidence, but we are making sure that anything that we need to do in terms of our European colleagues and the borders is in place. We have his car, we have his phone, and he's not used any of his banking. So they are three key lines of inquiry that most manhunts would have. So we are very reliant on the public and continue to appeal to the public to come forward with any information that they've got about where Rizidi is, who's looking after him, and what we can do then is take very quick action. You're quite right, there is a lot of surveillance in London. However, if he's holed up somewhere and not out and about, it's going to make it quite difficult to find him. We've got hundreds and hundreds of officers working round the clock following the CCTV. We have now continued to look through that CCTV and got him at just after 11 o'clock on Vauxhall Bridge onto Vauxhall Bridge Road. I have to reiterate that it's a very meticulous and careful piece of work to follow all of those movements on CCTV because as you can imagine if you miss something you take a wrong turning or you identify someone else that isn't a ZD it will send you off down a rabbit hole so we have to be very very careful about following the CCTV but we are tracking him and we will continue to track him. As we have all seen on the CCTV images, he's got a very significant, what appears to be, burn mark on his face. Now we have, through the NCA, been in contact with medical experts about what the impact of that will be. Clearly, without any medical intervention, that could prove to be very serious, if not fatal. Infection is an obvious thing that could possibly happen, which is why you know, I am appealing to Abdul that he needs to come forward to get that medical attention and to hand himself in. And how is the victim currently? She's still sedated, she's still very poorly, and we've not been able to speak to her, and you know, our thoughts are with her in terms of her making a recovery. And could you just tell us about their relationship? Well, we have determined through our inquiries that they were in a relationship, 
and that their relationship appears to have broken down. Can you tell us about how the meeting between the two of them came about and why the woman and her two children got into the car? Well, we're still working on that because obviously we've not been able to speak to her or him. Um, the children were able to give us a little bit of an account about what went on, but we're taking a great deal of care in how we are approaching the children for obvious reasons. So there's not a great deal that I can release to you at the moment about exactly the movements that evening just before the attack. We do know that they were arranging to meet and that they did get in the car and that the attack took place in the car, as you will have seen from the CCTV. So did he drive down from Newcastle at her request? We haven't got to clarify that just yet, but he did drive down from Newcastle that morning and they did meet that afternoon. How embarrassing is it for the Met not to have a clue where he is, to depend on the public on this? I mean, for somebody who's been in policing for so long, to not have somebody in custody after seven days, that's a bit of a damning indictment, isn't it? Uh, I'm not sure it's a damning indictment. I mean, we are taking it incredibly serious. This is an attempted murder and investigation. With all of the assets that we need in place to be able to find someone, it's a significant manhunt. We have to go where the evidence takes us. Uh, yes, we would much like to have got him into custody already, but we will track him down.